Welcome to a different kind of mead video. Today I'm taking the U2 Brew Brewing Kit and brewing it. Let's get started. All right, so this is from U2 Brew, or U2 Brew, the Oklahoma and me's coming out. So uh, this is a mead making kit basically it has ingredients it has instructions it is something new um, a new service of sorts that has, has come out and i have been so graciously sent a box to try so that's what i'm doing today i'm going to try this you to brew kit um, now we're going to open this up together and we're going to check out everything in it so let me get a little better angle for you all right so this is what it's like when you open it up we have a little card here, and a little seal on it. Um, we've got some ingredients. It says a B on it. Looks like some juniper berries and some something else. Um, got our yeast. We've got bottle caps. Got some. Looks like some sorbate. Some yeast nutrients or possibly tannin. So A and C, and then he, they do send some sanitizer which is nice, and a brewing bag. I think that's everything in here. So let's go ahead and check out this letter. All right, so this mead is for Ragnar's Horn, and it has some interesting things on it. it has got a little uh, tail and some, some specs on it. So this could be you know an average or standard of 13% to 16%. We've got must preparation. Okay, so it has some other things on here. Sanitizing, everything you're supposed to do. Yeast preparation. We've got the fermentation information, stabilizing, and sanitizing all those things. It's a nice little uh, pamphlet for tips and tricks. Uh, I think that's pretty user friendly. So we're gonna brew this exactly how it says. So we're gonna follow these instructions. Having to do something a little different. I was gonna use a carboy, but my all my honey is, my clover honey, which is what it suggests to use, use <laughs> is, crystallized. So I'm going to have to use a bigger thing. I'm going to get three pounds of honey to start because that's what this suggests. It's 2.5 to three pounds, 2.5 or three pounds, uh, three and a half pounds, excuse me. I'm going to add, I'm going to go for three and a half actually. We're going to go three and a half pounds of honey. Okay, I got my honey in. It says, uh, what does it exactly to say? Add sachet A to this. Um, I got a little bit of beef already with this. I'm pretty sure this is like Fermi dough and it's not labeled. Like the one thing they need to do is tell me what the heck everything is or tell people. I've done this for a long time. So I'm, this is Fermi dough or Fermi K, one of the two. Uh, but he didn't tell me that. So let's mix this up. Okay, uh, I also, I didn't do something before I mixed. On here, and I'll show you a picture, it says, uh, sanitize the, the provided mesh bag and place contents of sachet B inside, sealing the bag with an airtight knot, add to the bucket. That's before you start mixing your stuff. If you're like me and your honey was crystallized, putting this bag in and then taking a drill or stirring it like crazy would be a little bit silly. So I would wait, and I'm, I, that's why I waited to add this in. I'm gonna take this bag, this hop sock or whatever you want to call it, mesh bag. Um, and we're gonna add, it says contents or sachet B. Which again, I hate to be the guy and say it, but that it doesn't tell me what sachet B is. It looks like, I don't know, some juniper berries and something else, but I don't know what the other herb is. So y'all need to label this. Tell me what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do this over this so I can not make a huge mess. Mixed all that up. Oh, I should have been rehydrating my yeast. Eh. So, got my bag. This is a very big bag for this. Y'all, I'm being very critical of this. I make a lot of mead. So, if you are watching this, YouTube brew friends, Sam, Adam, those people, I'm just going to be very real with you. Um, okay. So, we have that put in there. We got room temp water. This is a 1.4 gallon fermenter. I'm actually gonna take in and add just a little more water because I might have peaked over that 3.5 pounds of honey. 
just barely. I My scale turned off right at 3.5 and I was in the middle of pouring some more. So stir this up some. We're now gonna add our yeast, which they did label it yeast. They didn't tell me what kind of yeast it is. It just says yeast. I get, I understand wanting to be simple, make it simple, but new brewers, like if they wanna repeat this recipe, they need to know what the heck they got. So unless I'm missing it, I wasn't there. Um, got my heated water. Sachet C, which this has to be go firm, knowing what it is. We're about to rehydrate yeast. This is go firm. Um, it, it's a great thing to add. Make sure you actually put that in there, guys. Would tell me people what it is. Put this in the water, and then we're gonna add our yeast. That's a lot of yeast. Dang. Uh, I wish I knew what kind of yeast this was, but I guess, I guess we'll just see. All right, we're gonna let this sit for five minutes and then we'll add it to our mixture. Allow to sit for five minutes and then stir vigorous, vigorously. After 10 minutes, add the yeast solution to the bucket. Uh, all right, so really what we're at in our mead making world, we have our yeast, we just need to rehydrate them. Had I been doing this previously, I would have probably been ready by now. I'll be back in a few minutes when this is rehydrated. All right, we're back. It's been about 10 minutes and this has been sitting. Yeast are waking up. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and rattle it up and dump it in. Gets all clumpy. All right, so that's all of the stuff out. Yeast and go firm. Um, now there's something not included on here. Talking about a gravity reading. Again, I understand this is going for the simple method. And if you follow their exact directions and do 2.5 pounds of honey or 3.5 and exactly water up to a gallon and all those things, you'll probably end up at 13% or 16% or starting gravity like they say. But I still think you need to suggest and talk about hydrometers, guys. Hydrometers are their best practice for mead making. So I'm gonna take a hydrometer reading real fast. Okay. I'm right in the middle, uh, starting gravity 1.110. So we're looking at a 14.4-ish percent brew. Not exactly what's on their thing, but that is okay. So we're gonna stick our lid and airlock on this. By the way, I already sanitized everything. I have my own sanitizer. This is, this is, I mean, uh, star sand essentially, I think is what it is. But um, make sure you use that if you haven't. We're going to put our lid on, airlock on, let it go. On here, of course, it says um, fermentation, store between 50 and 80, around 65 is best. Take your gravity reading every three days until the gravity reading reaches 1.000. You might mention that you need a hydrometer in there. And yeah, so we're going to let's go ahead and start fermenting and come back. All right, it has been two and a half weeks, a little over the 14 days mark that this says. Let's open this up and get a gravity reading. Um, I believe it's, it is done fermenting. All right, so our gravity reading after roughly about two and a half weeks is dry, 0.998. Now, if I'm looking at the, I used three and a half pounds. It says omit step four. Oh, well, I mean, this is, has some stuff for back sweetening. Anyways. Um, 0.998, so a little bit dry, which is totally okay. Um, I want to, first of all, I want to try something. I want to try and get this bag out of here real fast. So I'm just going to take it. I have a bucket over here. I'm going to pick it up and literally just chunk it in. Get that out of the way. We're going to rack this here in a second. But first, what does this taste like? Very young, by the way, this is two and a half weeks, so this is not totally a great judge of this mead, but we'll find out. Ooh, very, very, very spicy. Spice, not hot, but spice heavy. It's got a little apple juicy character. Again, I don't know what all that the spice packet was. I do like the spice side. It's definitely yeasty, which is not surprising. It probably, it needs to clear up some. I'm not gonna drink a lot of this because still young and yeasty um it needs a little time to kind of chill out next steps according to this will be to uh basically we're gonna, it doesn't actually say it goes from fermentation take a gravity reading straight to stabilizing 
So, um, of course we need to rack it over. So let's go ahead and rack this into a new container. I've got a sanitized glass carboy. I'm probably gonna end up with extra mead in here, but that's okay because there is a fair amount of sediment at the bottom. All right, so um, it says to add sachet D, which is a potassium sorbate. I honestly lost that. I don't know where I put it. I have potassium sorbate here. We're gonna go ahead and stabilize prior to cold crashing. And I'm doing that because I want to halt the yeast from re-fermenting and doing their thing. The cold crashing will help bring the layer of sediment and that stuff down. So let me go ahead and add my potassium sorbate. All right, so now I'm gonna cold crash this thing. So I'm gonna put this back on, start check it up a little bit. That sorbate will mix in and then um, through the process of cold crashing, stuff goes to the bottom, the sorbate's mixed in, we'll come back after and be able to back sweeten. So let me do that. All right, it has been, um, well, I cold crashed it, I should say for about four days. So I put it in a cold chamber and then I racked it. So it's cleared up a little bit. Um, we're now going to add and back sweeten with honey because it was stabilized. Like I said, we stabilized earlier. Now we're at the point where we can back sweeten safely. So let me go ahead and add, I think I'm gonna add about four to eight ounces of honey, depending on how much sweetness I want. All right, we have added um, eight ounces of honey, half a pound of honey to this. We used clover honey just to keep it simple and get honey everywhere. But let's talk about what it tastes like. It has more sweetness now, which combats some of the bright, really uh, in your face kind of spice notes. It still has a, a youthfulness to it. And then I get a little bit of yeastiness, a little bit of alcohol presence. Um, I can feel that burn, but the temperament between the sweetness of the honey and the floral side and the actual spices, spice pack that we used is very nice. It's pretty young. We're roughly, I mean, honestly, we're a month old to this day. So at 30 days, it's really not too bad. Yeah, it just needs a little time for everything to meld more. Everything is, it's kind of like, um, like a morning star, if you know what that is. It's like the, not the like an actual star, but like a, a medieval weapon. And that it has rigid points of like, I can taste this and this and this, which is not bad, but I want it to be more round, more smooth. Our final gravity is 1.016. So assuming that it doesn't referment for some reason, it'll stay there. Now let's look at the box. So our, after the stabilizing side, uh, so rack into a sanitized carboy, which I should mention, I also did rack it off of after the, the um, cold crashing session. Um, add the contents of sachet D. Now this had you had me cold crash or says to cold crash after, or sorry, <laughs> stabilize after cold crashing. I kind of did them both at the same time. Theoretically, it should have worked, but we're gonna find out. Um, I did back sweeten with eight ounces of honey, like it said. Mix well, allow the mead to clear. So basically we're just gonna let it sit for a while now. And yeah, we'll also see if the, the uh, actual stabilizing worked. So I'm gonna come back soon. We're gonna let this try and clear up, meaning give it some natural time, and then we'll see what happens from there. All right, BC. Yes, sir. I, I brought you here to- um, You brought me here. <laughs> yeah. To <laughs> help with the tasting. <laughs> uh -huh. So, um, I'm not telling you what this is. I just want you to get, give me your reaction to what okay. this meat is, and then I will tell you about it. Okay. So. It feels like a lot of buildup. <laughs> well, it's not. I just feel like if I spoil too much, then I don't know. You'll, it'll, it'll all make sense in time. It'll all make sense in time. Okay. What do you get from the smell? If I had to like put words to it, it smells kind of tropical. Mm -hmm. okay. Fruity. It's a little bit hot. There's a little bit oh, of it a... is young. I will definitely tell you that. It's young. <laughs> okay, there's a little bit of an alcohol burn in my nostrils. Uh-huh. Like kind of at the back of my sinuses. Mm -hmm. For sure. It does not appear to be carbonated. This should not be. <laughs> I just put in the bottle earlier, so if it is, okay. then I'm in trouble. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we good gotta, news. It's, it's... You achieved still. <laughs> okay. Anything else? It's hard to get past the, the booziness. Yeah. 
if I had to say it, it kind of smells dry. It doesn't smell. Okay. I don't smell like honey or. I get a little sweetness on the nose from it because, but I think it's the booziness as well. Mm hmm. Uh, I mean, it kind of smells like fermented candy. And mm, the, okay. it may or may not be what it is, but I think back to like the times when I like fermented Jolly Rancher y type stuff or Kool Aid type stuff. It's got a little bit of that. Seems like where I'm at right now in life. <laughs> you have been doing a lot of that lately. It's just a little bit cidery, but there is some fruit in there, which might be the honey. Hard to know. Okay. Are we ready to taste? Okay. Mm -hmm. It is dry. Maybe like off dry. Woo! It warms you right in here. Yeah, it's very warm. <laughs> <laughs> it is. This is a uh, cold weather brew. Mm -hmm. I'm not. The nose and taste are very different. I will yeah. note that that. I'm not picking up anything really notable on the palate. Do you get anything else um, flavor wise? Are you noticing anything that pops within this? There's kind of a stone fruit, peach pit kind of flavor in there. It's a, There's a bitterness and a stringency. Kind of pulls on the middle of your tongue a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is, It's okay if I say like something that I noticed that I don't like. Yeah, absolutely. It a little bit tastes like it was brewed in a pool hall. Okay. There's kind of a smokiness. Oh, interesting. But not like a wood fire smokiness, but that kind of like dark, yeah. dank. Kind of dank. Yeah, no, I get you. It is It is like um. I don't want to say it tastes like cigarettes because that, <laughs> that's not what it is, but it reminds that's me That's what it that. reminds me yeah. of. It's like a dark, I don't know, dark wet kind of place. <laughs> okay. I don't yeah. think that's a bad thing. It's just a thing that I wasn't expecting. And, and it's a thing that has developed as it's opened up a little yeah. bit. It's, as it breathes, it definitely transforms out. Give me other notes before I spoil. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have no, I mean, if this was like an episode of Palette Expanders, I would have a tough time <laughs> yeah. guessing what this is. You know, with six, eight months on this, I think this might be pretty good. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you what honey varietal this might have been. If you told me that you had made a, an apricot melamel, I'd say that's pretty good. Let's see how it is next year. But that's that's I that's the flavor profile I'm getting. Okay. It's like a dried fruit. So, you remember, three or four months ago maybe now, we received a package. A YouTube brew package. Oh, okay. This okay. is Ragnar's Horn, okay. which is that YouTube brew package they sent, and right. so it included. I don't remember what was in included it. Included in it was. I had a couple problems with them, and I'll explain in a moment. First thing, I think that it was some sort of juniper berry, and then some other spice of sort. There was, was something in red in there, wasn't it? Like a red it was, berry or something? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I don't know if that was juniper, I don't know what exactly it was. And that's beef number one, was that they didn't say what was included. Okay. Okay. So, I don't know my spices well enough. I don't know my berries or ingredients well enough to say that is whatever. Mm -hmm. So that is, that's that spice, which was the main component of it. Okay. A yeast that I don't know. Um, they included yeast nutrient, which was good. They okay. included sorbate, and I assume metabisulfite within the same package. So was this back sweetened? This was back sweetened with half a pound of honey, in a one gallon batch. Now, I, I only did half a gallon, half a pound, excuse me, mm -hmm. because the, on their little paper it said, you know, uh, if you want it to taste sweet, back sweeten with a half a pound. And so I just, I was following, trying to go okay. verbatim what they said. This is not sweet. It, it doesn't taste sweet to me either. It's it started off at uh, 1.100-ish, I mm -hmm. think in that range. Fermented out, of course, and then stabilized it, back sweetened. Thinking, I can't recall exactly, but it's like 1020, maybe. Hmm. I think the alcohol prevalence, which you noted is, is hot, mm -hmm. um, hides some sweetness. Yeah, and there's and an then, acidity in there that tastes fruity, but I guess it's, it's just clover honey. I just use clover honey. Whatever those berries or whatever spices they had is 
probably contributing some of that acid. Mm -hmm. The spice is very heavy in this, which I think is, it's supposed to be obviously a spiced mead in that regard. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, I, in that regard, they did it, but I do think it's a little bit hot. The balance is, is off to me. Like you said though, in six months, maybe the, this will temper down. And Was be... this intended to be consumed young? Um, according to their thing, they didn't specify, you know, drink in X days. Okay. They just said, okay. you know, they really is a little vague and said, let set until clear. So, and so I kind of pushed it. I mean, obviously it's not the clearest meat in the world. Um, yeah. I didn't really push, but I, uh, I wanted to include you in this because you also received a package and, uh, which I gave to our friend David mm -hmm. and he'll brew it at some point. Um, yeah. It's definitely got a peachy apricot -y. I really, really wish I knew what was included with that. And I looked, and maybe I'm blind, possibly, mm -hmm. where I just didn't see it on the, their information. They gave a lot of great information for people to know what to do, mm -hmm. but they didn't include, they had little, they called them, you know, sachet A, and it was like a little, it looked like a bag, yeah. a tiny bag of yeast or tiny bag of whatever they didn't say what kind of yeast so i had a, have a little bit of a problem and i've already expressed it in the video i don't mind saying it again um if you're gonna make a beginner brewing kit make sure you know what people or you tell people what they're getting so if they want to redo it they yeah. can like okay he used d47 so i'm gonna do that well if for someone like me who has one pretty prominent food allergy mm -hmm. I, I always want to know what's in everything I'm eating just to make sure I don't have that allergen in there. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it wouldn't be in that bag, but not knowing, right. or if it's not clearly labeled what's in that bag, mm -hmm. do you know if you're being exposed to a potential allergen that you have? Right. I mean, because if there is juniper in there and you've got, you know, some kind of cedar allergy, I could see there being some overlap there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Overall, though, I think if a beginner were to make this, it is a it's a decent intro into yeah. the world. Yeah, it's not unpleasant. No. It, it definitely needs age. It needs age. And that's that's part of the problem with this one. I feel like because the spice is so hot, it's gonna take some time for it to come down to a palatable um, I mean level, so mm -hmm. to speak. Huh. So yeah. yeah, I mean I'd I'd like to see how this turns out in six to eight months. And I, there's I, a lot of bitterness yeah. as it opens up. Uh, which presumably would calm down, but it's the type of thing like we, we've we've not really consumed much here, mm -hmm. half the bottle, and as it's opening up, a lot of those things are starting to yeah those those spice notes are come come forward yeah I definitely plan on doing a tasting in the future with this one to see what happens with it um, because you're right I do think it will get better and mm -hmm. in all things most of the time, meat-wise, get better <laughs> over time. Um, so we'll see with this one. But I wanted to loop you into this I one. I appreciate it. I, I was very interested in this project. It's just not the type of thing that would work out for my channel. Yeah. So I passed it on to David to get his expertise as a complete amateur brewer. And <laughs> I'm glad that you brewed it so I could see it from your perspective too. Yeah. So if you want to um, support them and you want to try this box, of course I want to promote them because you know not only were they kind to me, but I think we need to support the meat community at large. And so go and check out their link down below. Um, I couldn't tell you how much the kit is or where it's available. So if you're somewhere else where it's not available, sorry. But this is a good, I would say, okay to good starting point for your brewing point. Now, there are a lot of recipes out there, mead-wise, that mm -hmm. also might be a great starting point. Um, and of course, I'd point to my stuff, my channel, but more specifically, I want to point to to here, doing the most, who also has tons of videos on this stuff. So feel free to check out any of his videos. Um, most importantly, just go make a mead. You will never know what you've done wrong or right until you try it. And mm -hmm. so get out there and make it. Thank you to the YouTube Brew crew for sharing this box with me, and uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.